got it. First of all, about the music, about um, the songs that Monarch Fred does. Um, what about Don't Want to Hear It? I wanted to know about It Follows, like why you wrote right. it and what, what was the motivation behind it. What about, um, you said there were three ideas. Would you say that the dancing um, is kind of the ideal of what you want your the scene to be? It's supportive and everything else instead of the backstabbing like is in uh, no reason and it follows and don't want to hear it and what is their goal? What are they trying to accomplish? Why do you scream? And why is it so fast? And why can't you understand the lyrics? The way you dress, and the way the heart work, well not heart. Could you explain to why the people that are in the, uh, the scene, whatever, dress like you? <laughs> and dress like the people in the bands. Why is that? A lot of them seem to dress the same way. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the politics or what, some of the contradictions in, in the scene? Like sometimes, you know, it's, people say it's apolitical and then on the other hand you have some political ideas and why do you think hardcore happened? Can you talk about straight lines? Talk about discord. Why are you doing what you're doing? What, how do you feel about that? And what do you think will happen now? That's one, that's one difference. Say when people go to the Wax Museum. There's some general idea that made this thing happen. I mean, I know everybody's individuals and they all think differently, but... What is going to happen to these kids um, when they have to go and earn money to support themselves? I mean, but then how do you justify um, heading up this record company? Say if you had a friend who, you know, was killed in Central America. Don't they have a misconception of being afraid of, of um, people involved in the hardcore music scene? Anything else that you can think of? Well, it's kind of like the hippies maybe look at me for who I am, not what I look like. Talking before about the hippies, do you think you're the, the hippies of the 80s then? Some of your ideas are that, you know, non-exploitive stuff like that. And the fact that you are getting bigger, I mean, are you an angry person or? So do you think you're going to go further underground? How will you know when you've reached the point of I'll know. I don't know. A lot of people I know, or everyone maybe, just feel the great uselessness. You just, I mean, you're a human being and, and uh, 
it's all so big, you know, the world is so big and it's and the, everything is just so untouchable and unreachable that they just want to do something that they can be a part of and they can they can like mold and they can make because all through their life, you know, all through their school they're you're brought up and you're you know, they tell you all about people who created this and created that. You've been given a great, you know, everything you want. Uh, an accepted social scene, you know, the whole alcohol thing, and an accepted uh, music scene, it's all there for you. And uh, people don't want it. And they just say, fuck it, they don't want that. They want, you know, they want to be part of something. I can tell you that when I got interested in the music or whatever, like the alternative lifestyle or whatever, uh, it was not hardcore, it was like punk rock. Or even, actually it was even new wave. The general idea was like, it was basically me and about ten other people decided that we wanted to play our own music and we wanted to do like our own thing and it just it built on from that and uh, there was, Washington had a, it was a really strong strong scene and when there was a show it was like an ex it was not just a show it was like a full on you know, party. A lot of hardcore stuff is just is fast, very aggressive and loud, you know, music, angry music. And I think that the dancing, it just, it re, you know, reflects the music naturally. And you just want to move, get going, you know, people just, that's like the whole energy thing once again. Uh, the stage diving was just something that uh, we saw in California and sort of emulated. When we used to dance, it was definitely violent, but it was also somehow much more choreographed whereas first of all we didn't go in a circle which i think is something about that really bugs me okay uh and number two we sort of just weaved in and out and we worked with each other and it was not like hurting and nothing we were pretty like pe people dance to the music which has sort of gone away in the last six months people don't seem to dance to the music anymore they sort of run around and you know be crazy or whatever which is fun and dandy but uh so back then it was a lot more choreographed when you go off a stage and you have like friends who are going to catch you there's a feeling behind that which is great like a great example is a drink how we open the doors of clubs there's no uh, no overage shows in Washington no hardcore overage shows at all because well, where were you kicked out of clubs? violence or just aggression or just scared or a lot of times cause we didn't, the bars died didn't make any money wasn't worth it to them what? Not worth all the, all the, all the fucking internet because people don't drink. People didn't drink. I mean, some people do, but they don't. They don't. I mean, it's on, you know, they don't. They, it's not enough. And uh, there's no, there's not an emphasis on drinking. The emphasis is on the band, and the people. It follows. Well, because uh, just the whole, the whole thing about when you become, how why I became a punk or whatever, and. When I became a punk was to escape all the just the bullshit that you know the social scene of high school and just the typical normal stuff. And here I thought that I was like you know because I had become a punk that I was like you know we were all so much above it now and you know that we had to deal with it. And all of a sudden I realized that you know that social scene is the punk scene now and that it's all caught up to me anyway. You know and that even though I thought I was escaping it the whole time I was and it was there the whole time anyway just a different shape. Sort of like a bitter realization, you might say. You know, tap me on the back. I don't want to hear it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> all my songs, I write my songs, I mean, I have one thing in mind usually, or maybe a few things in mind, but it starts to apply to everything. When I first wrote, I don't want to hear it, uh, it was just, I mean, it was basically about, you know, just about people talking, like, you know, about how good, you know, how great they were, or how, you know, how they were so together, or whatever, and that kind of stuff, and it was all bullshit, for, you know, for someone to say, like, you know, oh, yeah, I got my shit together, or, you know, you know, it's it's, not, it's a lie, and it's just like, I don't even want to hear it anymore, just, you know, because as we start out, I mean, that's pretty, I mean, to me, the meaning of that's pretty obvious, I don't know, I mean, I don't know what you're looking for exactly. No, I mean, I'm saying every song has, like, I mean, I'm, I get drive, or whatever, I get this, like, the want to write the song with one or two things in mind, it sparks me. Halfway through the song, I start realizing that it meets, it covers a lot of stuff, and two months later, after I write the song, I realize that, 
it could apply to almost anybody or anything. I'm not about to go. I'm not going to go sell people on my ideas. I'm not going to go out and like try to get people to convert to hardcore or do whatever. Why are you doing what you're doing? Because it's for me, not for anyone else. It's for, you know, I mean, it's for other people. But what I'm doing is to get my own shit out, and I'm not trying to convert. I'm not into, like, selling. That's one of that. I hate fucking organized religion for that. Because it's, it seems, like... It seems disgusting to me that someone could, that would sell something that supposedly means so much to you. If I can respect myself and I can respect you or whatever, and then you can respect yourself and respect me, well, then that's two people, and if we can make it four, that'd be nice, and then so on and so on. And it's idealistic, I'm sure, but certainly no more idealistic than for me to go, yes, I'm going to go out and change the world. That's, you know, that's bullshit. It, the world, I can't change, I can't change... You know, this block. I don't know, I might be able to change a block, but I can't change a city, that's for sure. And I, I don't think I can change, I know I can't change a country in the world. I don't even know enough about the world to even begin to even want to change it. I'm not even sure the world's all that bad. The hippies failed, you know. Here they had done it, they were like, they're the, you know, the ones who struck out against the whole regular old shit. And, uh,. They just settled down and got their careers happening, just like, and I'm sure the punks will do it too. But at least these guys, these kids can get a spark and just try to like fucking uh, put together, create or uh, mold something on your own, and not be not play on someone else's playground. Well, let's say what used to go on here used to be totally different than what used to go on in L.A. and what used to go on in San Francisco and what used to go on in New York. And now that it's become a more national music, and it is getting more national, the scenes are not that much different, not that much more unique, and they're all becoming the same generic kind of stuff. Well, my threat, uh, we're always, we're playing a game of chicken. Um, the, this game of chicken is where we ride our vehicle as long as we can and, and jump off before we sell out. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Art Lounge. Uh, this is the project stream, and what you guys just watched was an uh, interview with Imakai. He is the lead singer of Minor Threat, and at the beginning of the stream, you guys, um, you guys saw the uh, the song "I'm Not Your Stepping Stone" from their album. I highly encourage you guys to check out the full album. It's great music, great songs, and uh, just to give you a little bit more info about who the band is, you guys might have heard of the Straight Edge movement, and that was something that was um, pretty much brought on by that band. Um, they pioneered it in a sense, but it was never meant to be a movement. As you guys heard from him, he said that he's not interested in converting people and that most of the songs um, written, it was just because that's his self-expression. You know, that is his form of art. Um, they weren't meant to be any sort of like religious and uh, dogmatic texts for people to follow because they listened to his music. It was just his self-expression. And it just inadvertently turned into something that a lot of people wanted to follow. Um, so what the Straight Edge Movement was at the time it was uh, something that he was talking about, which is not converting to social standards. You know, not doing things that, oh, this is what you do. You know, if you're this age, you're going to drink. Or if you're this age, you're going to have promiscuous sex. Or if you're, gonna, if you're this age, you're going to do this, that, and the other. And he basically said, I don't want to do that, you know? And um, yeah, as somebody else that mentioned in the, in the interview, uh, you are an individual. And as an individual and as a person, you have the freedom to choose to do things as you want to do. And you shouldn't be penalized for them, um, especially if they're peaceful forms of living. You know, you should be able to listen to the music that you want to listen to, go to the shows that you want to go to, uh, dance how you want to dance. Uh, dress and look how you want to look without being discriminated or shunned or, uh, you know, rejected because you don't fit into the mold of societal standards. And that was like the biggest movement of uh, punk rock. That was what punk rock originated from. It was to move away from uh, social standards, move away from these uh, boxed-in ways of seeing people, seeing 
each other um, and just kind of having these expectations and if you didn't meet them then in some ways you were thrown out or cast out or if you're talking about organized religion they would look at you as like you're the devil worshiper you know and that at that time it was used as propaganda against anything that they didn't seem to fit their mold you know and it also played into uh, going against capitalism, fascist capitalism, where pretty much if you didn't want to conform, if you didn't want to dress like they dress, talk about the things that they talk about, uh, think like they think, you know, if you dared to step out of these lines, then you were kind of doomed in a sense, or or shunned, or looked at as a terrible person, which is, all of it is nonsense. You know, it really, it depends on your actions and how you treat others. Um, which is what I Makai was talking about. You know, if I could respect myself and I, I and you could respect yourself and we could respect each other, that's great. That's one person, that's two people, and then hopefully four and so on and so forth. You know, that was his idea. Uh, despite his uh, music being quote-unquote aggressive, um, it showed a lot of uh, frustration with modern, well, at the time uh, it really applied, but it still applies to this day. You know, it hasn't really changed much. Um, these frustrations are still around, as you guys can see, um, where anything that isn't what is commonly accepted or isn't part of this, like, fascist capitalist system uh, is considered to be shunned and uh, is repressed, you know, and oppressed, basically. So it's still, it's still the same story, it's still the same ideas. And... Um, uh, yeah, he was basically just talking about that. You know, as an individual, you should be able to express yourself. You should be able to be unique, and you shouldn't be uh, shunned or cast out or treated um, as if though you're some creedin. You know, um, a lot of creativity stems from being an individual and being a person who chooses to do things differently, to choose to think differently. Uh, to view things differently, to dress even differently, uh, to look differently. Those are all areas where uh, creativity stems from, you know, you'd, and to repress that, to oppress that, that is just a systemic way of uh, serving capitalism. The more you fit into the mold, the more brainwashed you are, the more easily controlled you are because of those things. You know, if you... Uh, if you think like everybody else thinks, you don't want to be shunned out, you're too scared, you know, you want to make sure that you fit in, you dress, you think, you behave, you listen, dance, and act like they expect you to act. It fits perfectly. You're predictable, and you're easily uh, conformed into what they want you to think, act, and, and do, which is something that's very familiar, isn't it? It's something that happened in the past where if you didn't, uh, praise a certain symbol, or if you didn't dress like one, or if you didn't conform to a certain political movement, then you were uh, basically killed, even. You know, you were thrown out, or you were uh, um, executed, or whatever it is. So those historical events were pretty much led by that kind of idea. You know, this very much like conformist and um, specific look and thinking and behavior and um, action was all led by that sort of uh, idea, you know, that there is no room for individualism. And if you look differently, you will face these consequences. Um, so yeah, you guys can see how that still is the case in a lot of ways. And um, that band basically was against it. And the whole punk rock movement was against that as well. It was to say that, you know, especially in America, especially in American values, it talks about uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So regardless of your skin color, regardless of your religious belief um, uh, or gender, you should be able to pursue these things. You know, those are... The true values of it and when those things are trampled upon then you know you're facing something that is trying to destroy those values that is trying to destroy uh, and re-establish something that we fought off many times through history 
whether it was the uh, Stalin regime, right, where people were executed in their own country for not um, praising this one person who was incredibly tyrannical and oppressive and killed many people to Nazi Germany, which is the same concept, you know, where people didn't want to respect any uh, individualism and those who didn't conform to that regime were executed or removed or whatever, tortured, killed. So that all those movements are um, just an example of what happens when individualism is um, is oppressed, is repressed, um, and conformity is demanded. Um, so yeah, you guys got just a little bit of preview to what the punk rock movement was about, which really started around like the late 1970s, early 80s, and that band Minor Threat was formed in the 1980s. Um, they didn't, um, they weren't around for too long. They were for, around for three years, but within these three years, you guys can see how much they've actually influenced uh, history, how much they've influenced people and their ways of uh, seeing life and the way they were um, looking at interaction in a sense. And I think that even though I wouldn't label myself straight edge, I do um, commend that um, idea, that movement, the fact that people were so dedicated to just not doing what everybody else is expected to do. Now, you want to go drink? Well, I don't really want to. And I shouldn't be looked at as a different person. You know, or you want to do drugs? I don't want to. You know, that isn't the social scene. I don't have to do those things to be accepted or to be normal or to be, uh, to have a good time. You know, why do I have to do those things? And a lot of times people fall into that pressure because, again, they don't want to be shunned, they don't want to be looked at as different and um, to be rejected in some ways, but, um, but they didn't care, you know, and I'm a guy that didn't care about that, and he said, you know, I'm going to continue to live the way I want to live and do the things that I want to do without having to constantly answer to, like, this standard, answer to these um, expectations that I might not agree with, that I might not like. You know, and that really speaks for a uh, high form of individualism, to really appreciate your own perspective on things and having a broader um, sense of reality, a broader sense of uh, what's really important, what's really valuable, and to have a mind of your own. You know, not to be programmed by people, not to be constantly ruled by what others want to do, what others expect of you. And, you know, thinking about things yourself, figuring out why are these behaviors important? Why are they not important? You know, taking the time to actually think about, like, well, all these things are kind of expected. You know, they're popular. Do I really like them? Do I appreciate them? Do I find them to be valuable? And why are they valuable? You know, so it, that whole movement, just from the time that it started, really, was to question everything around you, to not fall into being programmed for other people's entertainment, for other people's profits, for other, other people's um, way of life, you know, and to really explore life for yourself. Um, and that's kind of what that whole movement is. You know, you, the way people dress is very much unique to their own way of trying to express themselves as human beings, you know, not being your cookie-cutter personality because um, you're too scared of what other people are going to think or what other people are going to react to you like, you know, and just kind of fighting against that in a sense. Um, that, um, I guess I would say anxiety in a sense, right? Where people are just like, oh, what is this person going to think? Or what is that person going to... And just saying, fuck it, I don't care. I'm just going to do the things that I like to do. At no had no need to be at an expense of another person, you know. So unlike fascist capitalism that uses people for exploitation, whether it's for profit or whether it's for popularity or a lot of other things, um, it's done just simply to experience life and to um, 
to really enjoy things for for your own sake, not for others, not for uh, popularity, not for you know all these other social constructs, but just to be able to uh, explore life in all the different avenues that you'd like, you know. Um, and yeah, it, and as I mentioned earlier, even I Mackay mentioned it himself that it isn't to um, diminish others in any way or to control others or to manipulate others. It's purely a form of self-expression. Um, and that's what basically a lot of his ideas were and a lot of things that he talked about, even in the songs themselves. You know, it's, it's to really confront these standards, these default behaviors that people have and uh, to have them think about all that stuff like what are you doing exactly are you doing it because you're using your own mind or you're doing it because you've been programmed to behave this way to think this way to act this way to say things a certain way you know following trends because they're trends and not because you actually um connect with the ideas connect with what these trends are connect with uh what these people are are doing basically um, you know, and to question all that stuff and help shape your own individual personality, your own perspective, your own points of views, you know. Uh, I think even in modern day, and a, a lot of people in mainstream media tend to want to cater too much to be accepted, and um, j they just hinder their own personalities, their own sense of individual individualism and points of views because they're just too scared of um the masses you know or the masses op the opinion of the masses and that's not always that doesn't always mean it's right just as i brought up the examples before in um the stalin regime in nazi germany all that stuff it was backed up by a lot of people at the time there were a lot of people who just chose to follow it and allow atrocities to happen because that was a popular opinion and they were too scared to stand up for what's right and uh as you guys can as you guys know as you guys have read uh, it caused a lot of atrocities it caused a lot of people to act crazy to become crazy uh to do terrible things become awful people all because of this um this concept this idea that you know, you have to do what other people tell you to do, or what is popular, or what's in demand. And um, that's, that's what ended up happening. You know, there's a lot of suffering, a lot of unnecessary death, a lot of arrogance, um, and, yeah, crazy behavior. You know, concentration camps and gas, uh, killing people in gas chambers and all this other stuff. You know, it's insane behavior. And a lot of it just stemmed from this idea that, you know, if you don't conform, if you don't look like us, if you don't behave like us, this is what's going to happen to you. And that's, that's crazy talk. That's people who are mentally insane um, and completely delusional and have uh, delusional grandeur. These are all mental conditions. These aren't insults. These are things that happen to people when they spin out of control with their egos and sense of accomplishments and. Uh, popularity, you know, that's something that really, uh, that really takes over and makes people incredibly toxic because then they just start to see like, oh, look at how great I am from all the people that are following me and they're doing what I'm telling them to do and it becomes this insane sickness in people's minds where they just start uh, building on this idea more and more and having more and more delusions about how uh, how much of a gift they are to people. And they start doing insane things like putting people in gas chambers and, you know, talking about how you're better than somebody because of your physical appearance. You know, that sort of thing. It's just crazy, um, crazy forms of interaction and behaviors and views on reality and life, you know. And, um, you know, just going back to the idea of where creativity stems from. If you think and act and behave like everybody else, uh, where do you have the inspiration come from to think of things or create things that are very different? 
um, you don't, right? Because you're not wanting to step out of that, um, that reality. You don't want to step out of what is normally accepted and what is normally a normal way of interacting and um, popular way of thinking and that sort of thing. If you're constantly in fear of stepping out of that um, social construct, then your, your creativity will be stifled. Your ability to actually come up with different ideas, you know, that is what we have to uh, thank in history, that there were constantly people who were fighting against this idea um, of, you know, thinking and acting like everybody else and coming up with different principles, um, different theories, different ideas. You know, they didn't... Um, they challenged people's points of views and their own to really come up with some interesting inventions, uh, interesting theories, um, and scientific experiments, and all those things. Because people dared to um, to think different, to behave different, uh, to live life differently, um, and it's because of all those things that we were able to have. Um, even technology, you know, things that people dreamed up um, and at times they were told, oh, that's crazy talk. You know, what are you talking about? That's nonsense. That's something you would see in the movies or, you know, in a book or some sort. And those people still, despite this pushback, despite all this uh, negative conformist sort of aggression that came their way, they still pursued to um to think act and dream differently um so it's really important and you know in that video and when he talks about all that stuff and when you guys see um the way people danced and the sort of energy that's all there it's not real aggression those are just self expressions and as he mentioned, when people were dancing back then, you know, which really did change over time, um, it wasn't about trying to hurt somebody. It was about getting your energy out with consideration to other people around you. So it was like choreographed to kind of weave within each other in this like sort of chaotic um, way of dancing. You know, you're not trying to be you know, these celebrities and trying to be incredibly sexy and accepted and um, popular or whatever. You're just having a good time, you know, and as strange it might look, you're having, you're having fun and you're not trying to hurt anybody. It just happened because people were just letting loose. And I think a lot of times and also because there were people who were jealous of the movement and were jealous of what was going on and um, how people were just like feeling liberated. There were people who would purposely try to sabotage those um, those events, those times. There, there would be somebody who would come in and they would be incredibly aggressive because like people are bumping into each other, They're bumping into each other in a friendly way, you know, in ways where you're just kind of um, colliding with each other while dancing, while having a good time, and that was seen as a good, as fun. It wasn't seen as aggression. It wasn't seen as what we're seeing now, a flexing or whatever those Nazi kind of terms and behaviors that people are embracing. Uh, it was just something that happened, yeah. and um, that that did change over time. I mean, he was he was right when he said it. Um, and it did turn into that. It turned into a lot more fascist sort of behavior where people would go to to their shows and like knock drinks out of people's hands. You know, when he wasn't advocating for that. He wasn't trying to have these shows become this like also fascist movement where people are becoming incredibly aggressive towards anything that doesn't suit their mold. You know, um, and violent when things didn't pan out the way that they wanted to. Um, so, yeah, this, uh, this band was a huge influence, I believe, to a lot of people, a lot of 
uh, points of views as well. And I thought it was important to share with you guys. And thankfully, I actually figured out, or I believe I figured out what the problem was, and it had to do with OBS. It had to do with some, um, some settings that I played around with, and it seems to have seems to have solved the problem. So apologies again for those of you who uh, tried to tune in earlier today for the Drawing Basic stream. But hopefully now that I know what the issue is tomorrow, same time and place, um, I will be holding the Drawing Basics uh, stream again. But, um, but yeah, going back to just all the stuff that we were talking about earlier, there are a lot more bands actually that came out during that time in in the 1980s, in the beginning of the 1980s, like bands like Bad Brains. That's another punk rock band. Uh, it was an um, all-black band members band, and um, they were all connected well with each other, minor threat. Um, black Flag, Bad Brains, they were all uh, within the same time period as well, uh, influencing each other in the music and having their individualistic um, expression of politics, of social interaction and social norms, um, you know, and even in that song, as Ian Mackay mentioned, I don't want to hear it, that song was just basically about how people are just trying to convince others of all this bullshit, you know, I got everything strained out, I'm, I'm like this perfect person, or I'm so great, and so on and so forth, when it's just not... That's not the case. You're just full of it, and you're trying to like manipulate people for it. And you'll have that happen a lot now, you know, where people are really disconnected from even their own reality, you know, where they're filling themselves up with so much bullshit on a daily basis because they want to make money, because they want to become popular, because they want to be superstars, that they just totally lose track of their own reality. You know, they're just constantly living in all these lies that they're telling other people, and it becomes this delusion, in a sense, in their own eyes eventually, where they're not even realizing how much they're just fabricating and lying constantly to themselves, you know. And this is kind of like the product of the system, of what it tells you to do in order to make money, in order to fulfill things that they've system systematically have conditioned you to believe are incredibly important um, with the help of social media with the help of people constantly seeing oh my god millions and viral and all this other stuff but it it doesn't it doesn't talk about good content or any of that stuff it's just what can i do how can i sell myself to become viral um, and in that process I think a lot of people just lose sight of things that are really important and things that are really interesting and um, healthy forms of interaction with each other, themselves and others. Um, you know, all that just gets kind of thrown out while people are just pursuing this, um, this endeavor, in a sense. And again, all that ends up throwing out things like um, deep searching of what is truly valuable and what really does make us happy as people. You know, these are all just temporary fixes. These are temporary things that go away in no time. And these videos that go viral, give it a couple of months and nobody remembers any of it. Some are even just weeks. and Nobody really rem remembers that person or what they've done or any of that. Um, and it's become this, in a sense, I believe, this kind of culture where everybody is disposable and nobody really matters, even if they do achieve things that are viral or whatever. You know, this the way that things have been programmed or conditioned, um, just people become incredibly disposable. Even in, in relationships as well, where... People don't even find value within each other because they know they can easily just go 
and find somebody else on dating apps, you know, or so on and so forth. And I'm not saying this stuff is bad. What I'm saying is um, people's values have really shifted to um, disposability, you know, of pretty much everything. Um, and I don't really agree with that. I think... I, I think that there needs to be balance more, you know. There needs to be a balance between all these things. Not to stray way too much to one side or the other. And the idea of disposability was also present in all those re regimes that I was talking about earlier as well. You know, people's lives um, were so disposable based on these really superficial things, like, oh, your appearance. You didn't match this, like, standard that we believe to be superior whatever that garbage term is uh then you almost don't don't deserve to exist that is absolutely crazy that is absolutely insane and i think um again it, what becomes popular view what becomes you know somebody who's let's say incredibly rich and popular and makes all these um stage or media appearances starts talking and thinking this way other people are like well he's really popular or she's really popular and they think that way so uh if i do that then i'm going to be just like them and that becomes incredibly dangerous again you know dis dismissing your own individualistic uh un understanding of things and trying to emulate others rather than thinking for yourself and uh focusing on things that really are true and are meaningful as opposed to popular and cool or uh popular and rich or whatever you know all those things that really kind of um throw your personality on the burner um so yeah i really do find a lot of value in that movement i think it really still you know uh, unfortunately in it, that movement has been also um, brainwashed as well. You know, the more mainstream it became, the more people wanted to emulate the physical appearance um, rather than actually the ideologies and uh, values that stemmed from them. You know, the reason why people dressed so differently was because they didn't want to fit or look or resemble the mold of those who are oppressors of individualism you know, or uh, those people who just didn't like that you were different in some way. So people would dress purposely uh, differ as different as possible to, distingu to uh, distinguish themselves from that. You know, when you see somebody who, let's say, has a mohawk and has like whatever, uh, all this whole get up or a punk rock look, then you know, okay, this person really does understand that uh principle that value of individualism and how to respect um differences in a sense uh, but now it's really become as it became more mainstream it's become um it's become watered down where people are just dressing you know they're like oh that that's a cool style that's pretty much it you know they totally forget or don't care about the the intention behind it the philosophy behind it the idea behind it uh, just gets thrown out and it's focused primarily on like physical appearance a very superficial kind of concept of what it was really all about um, and in some ways i'd say it is good that it became mainstream because back in the day back in the 80s back in the 90s um even late 70s, if you were dressed that way, you were uh, immediately attacked by people who were considered to be quote-unquote religious, you know, people who are studiers of morality and of values and so on and so forth. Those people would end up attacking these, um, these kids and these individuals, basically, who wanted to be different. Um, so there was a lot more violence towards them. There was a lot more slurs and um, aggression and uh, hostility and all this stuff just because somebody wanted to look different or want, enjoy a different type of music, enjoy different ways of dancing and thinking. Um, 
yeah, just this repetitive nonsense that happens in history over and over again, uh, out of this ignorance, out of this specific, um, I would say, uh, conformist uh, pr uh, principles and values and behaviors. And, um, yeah, and now, and over time, because it became more mainstream, because people talked about it on TV more, because there were more bands that played that type of music, that hostility has dissipated. It hasn't, it, it wasn't as uh, intense and violent and crazy and hostile towards people who looked like that anymore, um, which is the benefit, the positive aspect of it that um, came out of it being be becoming more mainstream, becoming more um, accessible to the public and um, so on. But what ended up happening was because of that, it just lost so much of its message. It lost so much of the values that were pushed for um, with that form of self-expression. So the idea is to just kind of highlight that, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this um, this band up specifically because they were so um, um, focused on the idea of individualism and focused on so, so much on trying to have high value f towards yourself, towards others, um, that I wanted to, in a sense, keep that alive, you know, uh, from my own efforts, from my own ways, to um, inspire people to, to look into that, you know, to think about all those things, to look into yourself, in a sense, and try to find uh, who you are, not based on what the mainstream media expects you to be, what, you know, what is considered to be popular and cool, but who you as an individual are. You know, I feel like that's what Art Lounge is about. That's what art is about in general. You know, the ability for you to be able to explore yourself, whether it's through music or writing or illustration, um, um, architecture, comedy, whatever it is, any of those fields, it really is about this journey for you to be able to discover yourself, you know, not to just become a popular icon of some sort. <coughs> Which people um, seem to mainly pursue. And because, you know, capitalism puts a squeeze on everybody, people think about that less and less, and all they think about is money. And that's perfect for them, you know, it's another way for them to program everybody to think, act, and behave the way they want you to so that they could sell, the, sell you products, they could sell you things that is going to make their life better. You know, them exploiting you and being able to um, basically do as they wish with your, with your desire to achieve what they set you out to achieve. You know, and, um, and that isn't that much different from like, Nazi behavior. You know, if you uh, behave, act, and think, and look like them, then you're okay, but if you don't, then you're royally screwed. You, know, you are basically, yeah, thrown in a camp or whatnot, or uh, during Stalin's regime, it's the same idea. You know, if you didn't praise that, that political movement, if you didn't praise uh, the leader at the time, that's it. You're, you're basically living a miserable life. Um, so it's just history is constantly giving us warnings, and it's talking about how, like, hey, if it follows this pattern, if things start to move in this direction, other terrible things will follow because of it. You know, they just kind of, uh, one feeds the other, it leads to another. Um, so, yeah, you know, those are, that's why I feel like it is still important to remind these principles, these values, talk about these historical events and what really brought rise to them, what really brought out um, all, all of this stuff. You know, there's, um, there's that, what a lot of people would say would be like the American dream of having like a white picket fence and uh, two dogs and a family and, and all that stuff. And if somebody didn't want that, or if somebody wanted something different, then they were to seem to be as, like, mentally damaged. 
you know, there was a song about that, and it was by the, I believe it was the Descendants, it's another punk rock band, where it talks about just that specifically, or how a person who chooses not to, do, to pursue that or see that as something that's valuable to them is looked at as someone who has, like, mental problems. You know, meanwhile, they are um, subjugating to people to violence because of their points of views. Um, so who is the real crazy one? But, uh, yeah, that that song pretty much talks about that, you know, how you should be able to choose um, what you what you want to do with yourself, with your life, and um, not be penalized for it because it's making other people feel insecure about their decisions. You know, why don't you want to do what I want to do? You know, I want these things. Why don't you want to do it? And if you don't want to do it, that makes you weird. You know, it's this way of people dealing with uh, insecurity, basically. Like, and this idea that if you aren't like everybody else, then that's not normal. So when the moment when it comes, a person's like, well, this person isn't acting like, um, like me, then that means something is wrong with me. No, something is wrong with them. You know, and it becomes this really toxic uh, form of interacting or viewing people where unless they think just like you and if you don't think like everybody else, um, or if you think like everybody else, then everything is normal. And that's, that's, a, that's a huge problem. You know, it's, again, it starts out the same cycle of things that just become incredibly destructive and crazy. Um, all those, all those uh, terrible atrocities that happened in history and still happen are, are because of this form of thinking, you know. Um, so um, explore that stuff, you know, explore that, that music movement and um, the bands that, you know, that came from that time. Um, they all came from the specific problems that were pretty serious back then. Um, and they just tend to repeat themselves over and over again because of this. Um, trying to think of other bands that have this sort of political perspective. And that's the thing about punk rock. You know, you'll even see some people who are um, talking about it and making comments. They're like, oh, I'm just here for the punk rock music. Like, why are you talking politics? Because it all stemmed from it. You know, the entire movement was there because of how damaged politics were. And the actions of that time um, really created this disdain from the new generation where they were just so frustrated with all this, you know, fascist garbage that came out and that started to develop itself even more all the way up until today uh, that they had to find something else that like they were they didn't want to be part of that they didn't want to contribute to it they didn't want to uh yeah they didn't want to participate in it um and as you see now it's like the same same story as well But anyways, guys, that was it. That was Minor Threat. That was an uh, interview with I'm a Kai. Um, I highly encourage you guys to check out that band. Uh, he also was part of another band called Fugazi, which is another great, ba uh, another great band by the same lead singer. Um, and he went on to form many other ones as well after that. So check him, check them out. Take a look and see um, all the other bands that are available. They're also available on um, different social, uh, not social media, but like either Spotify or Apple. You can find pretty much all those, um, all those bands, all those songs on there to listen to. Um, And then just getting back into this, 
you know, this is, um, yeah, illustration is also just another way of doing that. You know, there's many illustrators who um, have political views put out. You know, they're basically self-expression as well. It's not, and I'm sure a lot of you understand it, know that. It's just a way to reiterate how beyond music, other things, other forms of art share this same idea of individualism, being able to explore ideas, um, ways, and uh, expression that isn't common and that isn't uh, widely accepted or popular and whatever, and just be able to enjoy that process. And I highly encourage you guys to share your thoughts, you know, whether you agree, disagree with it, what are your opinions on it. Um, that's really what Art Lounge is about as well. Um, it's just so that you guys can have a place to just share ideas, uh, bounce off ideas off of each other, off of, the, off of me from the stream, um, and form your opinions on stuff you know, form your own individualistic interpretations of reality and everything that goes around us. Um, so, yeah, post any questions, post any comments. I'll, I'll hit you guys back up through the stream or um, through the social media, depending which one you, um, you use to connect. and get the conversation going. This won't be the last time, um, I will be streaming other bands or maybe even other songs by the same band, Minor Threat, um, to keep bringing up this, these concepts, to keep talking about how important it is to, um, as, as I mentioned, respect others and respect yourselves in order to be able to create more interesting um, more interesting stuff for us to experience, for us to learn from, um, connect with each other on. And that's one of the things that I really love about illustration, painting, and all that stuff is because you get to really see the uh, uniqueness of every single artist. You know, what their subject is, how do they draw the lines, what kind of lines they choose. Um, how their process is, you know, I, I like watching process videos as well because you get to see that not everybody has the same approach. Some people have a very unique approach to um, how they begin their drawings or illustrations. And uh, that's what makes it so much fun. And I would never want that to be taken away because it's not popular. You know, it's so stupid. It's so ridiculous. Imagine if, like, the Wright brothers never pursued their dream because it was so uh, unpopular and so crazy to think of all the things that they did, where we would be, or any of those inventors and um, creatives who, who dared to 
keep um, keep exploring themselves, keep exploring their ideas, keep challenging the realities or the standards of realities of their times. Unfortunately, guys, um, and because earlier there were some technical issues, um, which hopefully it seems like I figured out what the problem was that tomorrow, um, you guys can tune back in for two full streams this time where I will be doing drawing basics and coloring comics. Um, so tune back in tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Art Lounge. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Check out the Patreon page. It was just launched last week where you guys can find many different ways to participate, be part of the Art Lounge stream and to support the stream um, and keep it going uh, so I could share more interesting content with you guys and uh, share some of my work as well. Uh, all right, y'all. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.